Many of you today are working with real-time and big data from different types of sensors for workflows that range from situational awareness to incident detection to trend assessment. For example, this is a dashboard of transit information in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're looking at a variety of data streams here. Public transit, micromobility, social media, and anonymous devices. These larger moving tracks are the city buses, traveling around on their routes shown in green. These stationary sensors are the city's public bike stations, showing the numbers of available bikes, where lower numbers of bikes are shown in red. And these update every few seconds. These smaller green tracks represent connected vehicles, whose location would be picked up by roadway sensors. In this case, it's anonymous device data being replayed. And this hexagon layer that you're seeing in the background is the count of Waze alerts that have been reported in the past few days. This type of layer dynamically displays on-the-fly aggregations so that you can see patterns more easily. In this case, we're looking at the type or the count of alerts, but we can also display the raw features to more easily differentiate between types of alerts. And all these information products provide situational awareness and insight. Now, many of you are already leveraging GeoEvent and GeoAnalytic Server to access and analyze observation data. And this is often really difficult work. Each data stream is unique and brings its own challenges, especially when you're integrating feeds across the entire agency. Sensor data comes in at high velocities in some cases, which means you have to be able to scale your infrastructure and then deal with large collections of data. And you typically have to have dedicated staff to manage these environments and ensure that they're resilient. Today, we're excited to announce the release of a new capability for Esri's geospatial cloud. ArcGIS Analytics for IoT changes the game for real-time and big data location analysis. It's a hosted, managed SaaS, which enables you to access, analyze, and act on any kind of observation data. It runs on a Kubernetes container-driven architecture, which means that it can scale to massive velocities and volume, all while providing advanced spatial analysis. So let's take a look. Analytics for IoT is an authoring environment for feeds and analytics, which not only ingest information, but transform it, enrich it, and take action along the way. The first thing that we're going to look at is creating a feed. Creating a feed is a guided experience that's designed to help you bring in your real-time data successfully every time. You get started by choosing what type of feed you want to create, whether it's coming from ArcGIS, a cloud platform, or a web and mes messaging system. In this case, we're going to bring in that bus data, which is GTFS information that we're replaying to an Azure event hub. Analytics for IoT integrates with cloud platforms like Azure and AWS to bring sensor data into ArcGIS for spatiotemporal reasoning. The first step in creating a feed is providing the connection information. So for an Azure event hub, these are things like the shared access key, the endpoint, and the entity path. Once the connection's established, Analytics for IoT reaches out to that stream of data, samples it, and derives the schema for you in one step. And you can proceed to make changes from here. You can adjust field names, you can fix field types, and you can drop fields that aren't necessary. Next, you tell Analytics for IoT about the key properties in your data. This includes things like the geometry, which in the case of the buses is latitude and longitude point data, the date information, which in this case is coming from a single timestamp field, and whether or not there's a track ID, which for the buses would be the route. And that's it. We'll go ahead and give this feed a name, like City Buses, and we'll save it to our account. A feed is a new type of item in ArcGIS. It encapsulates all this connection information, these parsing details, the schema of the data, the, the, the key properties, and it's running in the cloud. With Analytics for IoT, there's no need for infrastructure or system setup. All you need is a web browser, and you can connect to your data and immediately get to work. And a feed is also a type of stream layer. And this means that it handles not only data ingestion, but visualization. So we'll go ahead and drop this feed into the web map, and we can immediately get to work with our real-time data. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into Charlotte here. And being a type of stream layer means that as soon as that information arrives at the Azure Event Hub and is accessed by Analytics for IoT, it's pushed to the map immediately. There's no need to continuously pull a data set for the latest information. So these are those same bus positions that we were looking at in the dashboard. 
So a feed provides data ingestion, but also visualization and situational awareness. And you can also apply real-time analytics to the data coming in through a feed. Analytics for IoT is an engine. It allows you to interpret and take action on observational data. Let's look at asset monitoring as an example. Many organizations that are tracking assets, vehicles, or personnel want to be able to understand when those assets leave a work area or if they deviate from an expected pattern. Now, in some cases, that might just mean that they're completing their work for the day, but it also could mean risk or danger. Now, in this case, we're looking at these city buses moving around on their routes. But with Analytics for IoT, we can also detect and act on deviations. As you may already be familiar with from GeoEvent Server, real-time analytics are what you use when you need to know about something and act immediately. You put them together by linking different input feeds to tools, asking questions, and connecting the answers to different actions. In this real-time analytic, we're bringing in each bus position, calculating its distance to its assigned route, and if that distance is above a given threshold, we capture that observation and call it a deviation. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the results in the map. We can see a couple examples here. Uh, in this case, in the northwest, there are some city buses that were traveling around on routes that are different from their assigned route. And over here in the, in the southeast, we can see a, a bus that was using roads at various points that aren't part of any city route. And this kind of information illuminates incidents that you might need to look into more deeply. And with Analytics for IoT, you can configure output actions, such as sending an email alert to a transit manager. Now, in addition to being able to analyze data in time, with Analytics for IoT, you can also process and analyze your collected data over time using a big data analytic. Big data analytics, of course, allow you to assess patterns on a broader scale. And in Analytics for IoT, it can also be on a regular basis. So let's look at road and lane closures as an example here. Many cities provide information out about approved and permitted construction projects and the associated road and lane closures. This is provided out to citizens for situational awareness. But citizens are also increasingly acting as sensors and can report information on road closures through apps like Waze. So these are all the road closures that have been reported by Waze users in the last few days. And immediately, visually, we can see that some of these don't match up with the projects that the city's actually approved and is aware of. Using a simple big data analytic, we can compare these two data sets in both space and time. This analytic takes the approved city projects and the Waze reports and analyzes them in multiple dimensions, understanding the ones that match up both spatially and temporally. And it also assesses the Waze reports for additional scoring based on proximity and other criteria. As we layer our results into the map, we can see how some of these reports are now scored differently. The ones in blue represent Waze reports that line up perfectly with a project that's been approved by the city. The ones in orange don't line up spatially, but they do match up in terms of time and the street name. So these are probably just situations where the Waze user wasn't fast enough clicking the button as they passed through the road closure area. And anything left in red are Waze reports that don't line up with a city project. In some cases, there's no city project nearby at all, such as this example on 7th Street. But in other cases, the Waze report does line up with a city project spatially, but not in terms of time. So for example, this report from a Waze user came in on the 29th of January, which is actually a day after the project was supposed to have been completed on the 28th. Now what we're really doing here is identifying anomalies in space and time. And the power of analytics for IoT is that you can scale your big data analytics to run against hundreds of millions or even billions of features, teasing out irregularities from expected patterns. And these analytics also go beyond ad hoc processing to work in near real time, because they can be scheduled. This analytic is scheduled to run every five minutes, grabbing the latest city data, the latest Waze reports each time, and can be tipping off officials where enforcement might be needed. Think about that for a second. You can scale your big data analytics and turn any geospatial tradecraft into an automated service that evolves with new data, scales, and triggers action, and all without writing a single line of code. Thank you. Now, more broadly, 
All these feeds and analytics are driving information products that provide situational awareness and insight into behavior. ArcGIS Analytics for IoT brings real-time and big data capabilities as a service to Esri's geospatial cloud. It's hosted and managed for you so that automated data ingestion and analysis is easier than ever before. We're looking forward to seeing how you use it to unlock the power of location in your IoT. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Thanks very much. Perfect. Well, these are steady, incremental steps, you might say. This is actually a dramatic step. I don't have to have my own infrastructure to be able to deal with real time. I just connect my sensors, bring them into my own system at scale. So with GeoEvent Server, you might have listened to Suzanne years ago talk about we can scale up to 10,000 observations a second. You're talking here about hundreds of, obs hundreds of thousands of observations a second in, in real time. It's sort of like, wow, it's going to change the game. Thank mm -hmm. you.